If you regularly watch this channel, this isn't going to be a standard video. We're here to save this. Some of you may recognize this place, but most of you won't. I'm here at the Department of Chemistry at the University of Hull in the north of England for a very good reason. Contrary to popular guesswork, I did not study computer science or electrical engineering when I went to university. I studied chemistry for a number of good push and pull reasons. So first, my high school's attempt to anything computer related was absolutely stuck in the dark ages at the time. But also second, I had a high school chemistry teacher that made the subject seem intuitive. While I had math skills and had considered a math degree, you know, in looking at it, chemistry had the more obvious route into a career and getting a good job was important to me. When I was looking at schools, in the UK there's a unified applications process called UCAS. Through UCAS, you could apply for up to six schools at once with them all either rejecting, asking for an interview or directly giving an offer. I applied to six, but here's the five I remember with the grades they asked me to get. Both Hull and Surrey offered programs with chemistry with eChem or chemistry with computing, while the others were simply chemistry. Should say to my American viewers that here in the UK, we don't do general classes. When you're 18, you choose a subject, and that's a subject that you will do pretty much every module or credit in until you graduate. It's usually three years for a bachelor's in that case, or four years for a combined master's. I interviewed at three of the universities, but Hull was the only one I went back to, also for an open day to see the department and the campus. I ended up choosing here for three or four reasons. First, the department was the biggest on campus, with nice buildings. The teaching labs were massive and well equipped, and at the time the lecture theatres were comfortable enough, but were easily accessible. On one side of the building was teaching, and the other side was research. Second was the amazing lecturers. I met the person who was to lead my course, and we simply connected at the wavelength only matched by my interview at Surrey. I also met other lecturers who were dedicated to undergraduate learning, and a number of them are still lecturers and professors today. Third was the overall rankings. While Hull overall was mid-tier, the chemistry department ranked highly in research as well as employment after graduation. The league rankings tried to track which students get work six months after graduating, and Hull had been consistently top five or top 10 for many years. So fourth is the heritage. This department's been around for decades, but in the 1970s, Professor George Gray and his team created the first commercially viable liquid crystals called cyanobiphenyls. It's a technology we all use or is built on today. So comment down below what sort of liquid crystals your displays use. Perhaps the fifth reason is what some might consider a double-edged sword. If you're from the UK and someone says Hull, as with many places in the UK, it's not often perceived as the best. However, the university campus is clean and lush. The student accommodation was, in my view, better than others were advertising, and there's plenty to see and do here. This is the North, and as a born Southerner, I wouldn't change my years here for anything. As long as you're on their wavelength, people here are wonderful and friendly to casual strangers, almost a local village vibe. The locals here are proud of who they are. And coming from a small village myself, Hull was a very easy city to integrate to. Not only that, but for chemistry specifically, the local area is a powerhouse of industry. Between chemistry and related engineering fields, there's BP, Reckitt Benkiser, INEOS, Croda International, BOC, PPG Industries, Smith & Nephew, Kimberly Clark, Novartis, and others. A good number of graduates from my year group still work locally, or started there and have moved on to bigger positions globally. So why am I here telling you all this? Well, it turns out the university is thinking of closing the chemistry department down to save money. Now, there are many reasons for this. Uh, funding, location, uh, student numbers, and of course, politics. But I'm not here to tell you to come save the department. If you have the heritage to this place or the means to do so, then you probably already know who you should be speaking to. 
What I'm here to do is tell you about the people behind these walls that helped me become the person who I am today. There are a lot, so many. I, 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 I still get an adrenaline buzz. You come into a room and for me, there's an adrenaline buzz every time. I'm at the front, I'm the presenter, I'm in charge. And there are lots of occasions when, you know, I've worked the audience, I get a buzz from it. The, the beautiful mole molecule C60, so uh, shaped like a football, a truncated icosahedron, just like a soccer ball. Um, and I had two blow-up beach balls that were about so big across that diameter, two of those, and they were, they were soccer balls. And I gave them to the room and said, look at this, and I used these as teaching aids. For research, that buzz of finding something new, the buzz of understanding what's going on, even though most of the time it's actually wrong, what you think, but uh, it's just that, you know, that buzz, that moment of uh, the light bulb, basically. The light bulb, uh, you can see in the student's eyes when they, when you explain something and they actually get it. That's why I do prefer small group teaching. I think for myself personally, absolutely. I just don't think this sort of thing would have happened. From the point of view of the department, I think it has helped because there have been long-standing links with various large companies and research groups within the university, for example, like the Surfactant and Colloid Group. They even had a, you know, a, a sponsored, sponsored lecturer uh, who, who was funded uh, by a company for a long period of time. Being in this area makes a, makes a big difference because you just get to meet those people much more often, whereas if I was at the University of somewhere else, not in a big research class, you just wouldn't have those interactions uh, as often or as frequently uh, as we do here. I was appointed actually 20 years ago this December. Uh, I took it up um, is it 19 years ago next week um, uh, at the time I was what um, I had just turned 27 I mean I wasn't much older than um, the average student but there were several students in, um, in in the first year and second year who were much older than me um, and some of them were actually my age and you um, and we each have different pathways I think Making mistakes is um, a vital part of our own learning um, and it's always important to actually ensure that you're able to tailor things so that and adapt to the situation that you need to adapt. Well, I think it has helped because it provided the space. Yes, I think the first thing is that you can do it and there is a tra tra tradition of collaborations and then it is a matter of your own initiative, yes, that you think, oh yes, I have this idea and I know somebody who has done something similar, yes, and then you move on and uh, uh, um, take it from there and, and develop things. I saw a student who came through the foundation year here and that student worked really, really hard and that student got a really, really creditable degree and they delivered the address at graduation that year. Yeah, they weren't top of the, top of the school, but they were. They got a really creditable degree, and yeah, you look back and you think, yes, that's one of my students. I've I've helped that person. They're where they are today because I've taught them. But I always believe that actually, the um, and always have that actually the feedback that you get from um, your students is actually hugely important. Um, and you should always act in a way to actually improve um, improve yourself um, so that um, or, or realize where the challenges are so that you can overcome them well I think what I think is most interesting might just be differ, different to um, to what others think but probably the first large grant I got yes when I was appointed as a lecturer and I thought I just write it and I push it and then I just got it and I thought okay there's now seven groups and I'm supposed to to <laughs> all over Europe and I'm supposed to be the leader so that was just really a, a jump into the uh, into the cold water but it helped very much so that there was just 
there were at that time people around who said, look, you can do it like that and so on. So mentoring and guidance helped, helped a lot there. A lot of the staff here that you're going to interview were my lecturers when I was an undergrad. And I owe them a lot because they genuinely opened my mind to, to this stuff. Um, it made me realise that I could do this for a living. And yeah, they inspired me. So a lot of these people, I'm not going to name names, <laughs> right? Because it seems unfair, but a lot of these people genuinely inspired me. Yeah. I think they're a good set of people. I think they deserve another chance. Just goes to show what an eclectic mix of people have made Hull their home, either temporarily as a student or permanently as an early career academic. This is where all the ideas and research come in. It's actually labs like this. I mean, I remember being in here learning during my course, either in the physical chemistry labs downstairs or the organic and inorganic upstairs. Now, it's, uh, <laughs> I remember in these labs having uh, you know, 250 hours of experience throughout the course. And the course was built around that in order to you know, be validated as a true chemistry course. Nevertheless, a good university needs a great library. And the Bryn Mawr Jones Library is the tallest building on campus. Now, when I was here, chemistry was on the top floor filled with books. And we would come here, do project work, and study from textbooks. Now, I come from a time before Gmail, before Facebook, before all that jazz. And now, while today's students learn differently, the library is still here and it's adding books all the time. I mean, look at all the stuff behind me. There's even a vintage section just back there if you really need the old stuff. So a good UK university has to have a strong students' union. And at Hull, students' union is on campus. And because it's a uh, you know, self-contained campus, it means every department is within arm's reach of the students' union. It means the students spend a lot of time here, either in the pub, the club, the spa, or due to all the services provided. There's even a canteen, and we're in one of them right now. However, what I used it for was for the societies. And we had a couple of strong societies here on campus that I was a part of. Anime, for a number of years, we had all of our meetings and functions here, but also Computer Society, ComSoc, where I was VP for two of those years. So therein lies the rub. What makes this a university institution is the fact that there are students. Now we're here outside of term time, so there are no undergraduates. However, I have managed to catch up with a few postgraduates that are here. Yes. <laughs> uh, we did a um, sustainability uh, module and we had to green up um, a teaching lab experiment and I chose um, the extraction of caffeine from tea. I just went to Mike in the lab just to have a chat with him and I said do you think this would work this one little step and he said well why don't you come in and do it. So I spent two days in the lab by myself doing my experiment my first lab, I remember it well, I'd spent two nights looking online how to set up, uh, you know, the condenser and the, because I just didn't know. Came into the lab, had a full cupboard of glassware to myself and I couldn't believe it. And then we were left to do it and I thought, oh, they trust us to do this. Um, probably Tim Pryor. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he always seems to be at the forefront of open days, but he's always sort of waving his arms around and getting excited and getting other people excited about chemistry as well. I've seen his hat. <laughs> oh, yeah, his NSS hat, yes, yeah. Um, yes, so there's, a, there's an amount of them done PhDs, but there's so many of them gone to do uh, industry, uh, mainly industry because um, uh, the local chemical industry that, that's uh, around the Humber area. And it's, uh, uh, they were very rich for uh, a wide variety. Uh. A fourth year project with sort of in the inorganic chemistry with Grazia, and I really enjoyed it then. Like, I like the idea of sort of analysing like the structures of materials and the idea that you change one thing about that structure and it can have massive consequences for how it reacts and its properties. I feel that, that they were patient with me and they were there for me. Anytime I, I wanted support, I knew that someone would be there, email, telephone call, knock on the door, they were there all the time. I knew I could ask at any moment and I wasn't 
I wasn't ever scared of, of not being supportive, uh, supported. And I think if you are a little bit scared that you're not going to be supported, you maybe panic a little bit earlier. So, but I, I think in terms of me being a mature student, I don't actually think there was any difference. I didn't feel like that there was any difference. They're always help, uh, they're always, uh, they will help, you know, um, happy to help, that's the word. Um, yeah, I mean, they'll take time to, to help uh, if you're struggling with something in particular, uh, as well as, well as um, I don't know, if you need something, you can go to another lab and they'll help you out. We'll all help together, track, track kind of thing to, to make something. So, I don't know. Well, I have been um, in one of the research labs and I've loved it so much. I have actually got my application um, ready and with the references to apply for a master's by research in chemistry. I felt when I graduated, I just felt like I dropped off the end of a cliff and I thought, what am I going to do next? I, what am I going to do now? I love it here so much. That's why I'm, I was in the teaching lab yeah. because I just, just the whole, you just get that feeling as soon as you walk in, I feel like I've come home almost. I didn't think, I thought I'd reached my limit with my Bachelor of Science and I thought I can't take this any further. But I realised that I can and I want to and I, I would never go anywhere but Hull, I love it. So for this final part, it's quite poignant so I'm going to read directly from my script here. I don't know what else to say. I spent four vital years of my youth here, in these walls, learning my craft, giving me the skills to dissect the research I report back to you on this channel. I cannot emphasize enough how having an engaged set of lecturers offering an array of exciting modules in a world leading institution sets young minds up for the challenges that lay ahead. If this place closes down, I'm really going to miss it. Based on other departments closing in the UK, STEM or otherwise, it's really difficult to restart them when they're needed. It's going to be especially difficult for this one, given the heritage and the foundations that it enabled for the university to thrive. I hope the Dean and Vice Chancellor know what they're doing. The effect they're having, not only on past and present generations of academics and students, but also for the ones that won't ever have that opportunity. I didn't think, I thought I'd reached my limit with my Bachelor of Science and I thought I can't take this any further. But I realised that I can and I want to and I, I would never go anywhere but Hull, I love it.